In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve problems associated with the physical pendulum. So in this example, we have a 1.5 meter uniform rod with a mass of 0.6 kilograms, and it's acting as a physical pendulum, as you can see in the figure below. What is the inertia of the rod about its axis of rotation? So it rotates about this point. L is the length of the rod. And to calculate the inertia of a rod, where the axis of rotation is at the end of the rod, it's one-third ml squared. So that's one-third times the mass, which is 0.6 kilograms, and the length is 1.5 meters. So 1.5 squared times 0.6 divided by 3, that will give us an inertia of 0.45 kilograms times square meters. So that's the solution to part A. Now let's move on to part B. What is the period of the pendulum? The period of the pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of the inertia divided by the mass times the gravitational acceleration times d. Now d is the distance between the axis of rotation and the center of gravity. So this is d in this example. Because we're dealing with a uniform rod, we assume that the mass is distributed uniformly among that rod. So the center of gravity simply has to be at the middle. So d is half of l. So if l is 1.5, d is 1.5 divided by 2, or 0.75. So the period is going to be 2 pi times the square root of the inertia, which is 0.45 divided by the mass, which is 0 0.6, so g is 9.8, and d, that's l over 2, so that's 1.5 over 2, or 0.75 meters. And so if you type this in, you should get a period of about 2 seconds. So that's how you can calculate the period of a physical pendulum, especially if the pendulum consists of a long rod with nothing attached to it. Now, how can we calculate the period of a physical pendulum if the rod is attached to a block? So we have the length of the rod. It's 1.2 meters. It's, once again, a uniform rod. And the mass of the rod is 0.5 kilograms. What is the total inertia of the rod and a block? So let's say that the mass of the rod is capital M and the mass of the block, let's use lowercase m. We know that the inertia of the rod with the axis of rotation at the end of the rod is going to be one-third capital M times L squared. Now the inertia of the block relative to the center or the axis of rotation, we could treat that as a point mass. So it's just going to be mr squared, or which is basically the same as ml squared. So all we got to do now is plug in the values. So it's one third times the mass of the rod, which is 0.5 kilograms, times the length of the rod, and that's 1.2 meters, plus, and this should be a lowercase m. I don't know why I made that a capital M. So it's going to be plus the mass of the block, which is 2 kilograms, times the radius, which is the length of the rod. That's still 1.2 meters squared. So 1.2 squared times 0.5 divided by 3 plus 2 times 1.2 squared. That will give us a total inertia of 3.12 kilograms times square meters. Now before we can calculate the period of the pendulum, we need to locate the center of mass. Because we have a block attached to the rod, the center of mass is not going to be in the middle of the rod anymore. So we need to find it. So how can we find it? So 
So let's say that, let's draw the horizontal version of this picture. And we're going to say this is position zero. And this is the two kilogram mass, which is 1.2 meters away from the axis of rotation. And the mass of the rod, which is 0.5 kilograms, the center of the, of the mass just of the rod itself, not the whole system, that's going to be right in the middle, 0.6 meters. But we need to find the center of mass for the rod and the block, which is going to be somewhere between 0.6 and 1.2. Now, because the block has more mass than the rod, we should expect that the center of mass should be closer to 1.2 than 0.6. So it should be between 0.9 and 1.2. Now, to calculate the answer, let's get Let's use the center of mass equation. So it's going to be mass 1 times position 1 plus mass 2 times position 2 divided by the total mass. So the first mass, let's use the mass of the rod. That's 0.5, and it's located at position 0.6, right at the center of the rod. The second mass is located at position 1.2. And the total mass, 0.5 plus 2, that's 2.5 kilograms. So 0.5 times 0.6 plus 2 times 1.2 divided by 2.5. That gives us a position of 1.08 meters. So that's the location of the center of mass for this particular pendulum. So now that we have that, we could say that this value is D. We can now calculate the period of this pendulum. So it's going to be 2 pi times the square root of the inertia divided by MGD. Now this mass represents the total mass. That's the mass of the rod and the block. So it's going to be 2 pi times the square root of the inertia, which is 3.12, divided by the mass of the block, which is 2 kilograms, plus the mass of the rod, that's 0.5, so we have a total mass of 2.5, and g is 9.8, and d in this example is 1.08. So go ahead and type that in. So 3.12 divided by 2.5, divided by 9.8, and then divide that result by 1.08. That's a small number. That's like 0.1179. And then take the square root of that result, and then multiply it by 2 pi. And so you should get a period of 2.16 seconds. And so that's the answer for this problem. Now it turns out that you could derive the formula for a simple pendulum from a physical pendulum. The period of a physical pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of the inertia divided by mgd. And the period for a simple pendulum is 2 pi times the square root of L over g. Let's see if we could take this formula and turn it into this. So for a simple pendulum, we have basically a massless string, which means it doesn't have any inertia. And so all of the mass is concentrated at this point. And so the inertia of the whole pendulum is basically the inertia of this mass around this axis of rotation. And so the inertia of a point mass is mr squared. And r is basically the length of the rope or the cord. So the inertia is ml squared. Now the location of the center of mass is basically at this mass because the string has no mass. So d is going to be the same as l in this problem. So we're going to have the total mass of the pendulum, which is m again, because all the mass is here, times g, and d is l. So we could cancel m, and we can cancel one of the l values. And so we get this equation, 2 pi, 
with 1L left over divided by G. And so that's how you can derive the formula of a simple pendulum from the formula of a physical pendulum.